So what is the most common drug that you see people coming in with problems for? Um, where we're helping the most people with adverse reactions to what they expected uh, would be LSD. Really? Where we're, we're just uh, talking to them, calming down, where they they may have went a different direction they intended. Why don't they go to the tent for that? Uh, we have the sanctuary for that as well. Overwhelmed, scared, need to talk, chill, uh, surrender. I like that because that's why people freak out because they don't surrender to the experience. Uh, when we do initiate a search, uh, you can you can expect everything right from your spare tire on top of your RV, under the car, in the bumper. Sometimes we unscrew the lights on the RV. Wow. People don't just usually lay it out. Some people do, but uh, if we if we find something that triggers that we feel that there's going to be uh, maybe intent to distribute narcotics, um, uh, then it's going to be an all out search. Hi. <laughs> Start low. Adam's fading. I'm fading. All right. Oh my goodness. So I just ran a mixture analysis and it's telling me a hundred percent cocaine match. Where did you find this? Fuck that poor person. Okay, so I am here now in front of the woman's safe space. Yeah. And you are? My name is Safety Stacy. Safety Stacy, I love it. And you're with Awesome Adam. Can I ask you what gender you identify with? No gender. No gender, okay, great. Okay, uh, Camp Clean Beats is a clean and sober camping area at Shambhala Music Festival here in beautiful Salmo. Uh, we provide a camping area for people that want to party sober. Uh, yeah, you know, we have something for everyone except we didn't have anything for sober partiers. And Because so you just wouldn't imagine it being necessary if you're stereotyping a festival. Right, but yeah. we don't stereotype. No, not a chumbala. Do we, Adam? I do sometimes. <laughs> Dude, this is like fairly dangerous. This is fairly dangerous though, because this is a lot stronger than most people will expect coke to be, because they're used to it being cut heavily. Have you ever had someone die in the festival? We have. Uh, there's been uh, a death on festival. This was several years ago, and it was pre-existing medical conditions, is what okay. the coronary report was. So you've never seen a drug-related death. In my six years here, I've never seen a drug-related. It's really good to hear. Do you think that's because of all the safety precautions that are going on? Um, this was a really close match, so I, sub I subtracted the blue line from the red line. The red line is the stuff that we had, and then what is left now is this red line here. So this is how much signal is left in the sample that wasn't explained, and that basically is nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing left unexplained. So, so what I can say now is that the only thing we found in that sample was MDMA. Clearly people come here to trip, to do yeah. drugs, to do, I was surprised at the GHB, but that's a totally other topic. But, so drugs are getting in. Now, are you necessarily deterring drugs from getting in or just really the large quantities? So if you have a large quantity, it's gonna be harder to hide it. Mm. And that's what we're searching for. Okay. If you have a small quantity, there's a good chance. I mean, drugs get into prisons. Right? Yeah. So drugs are going to get into festivals. We, we realize that. And that's why we have so much education and harm reduction inside the festival. Yeah, amazing here. Best I've ever seen. So we run a, a field hospital here at Shamba Music Festival. Um, like I said, we have 180 medical volunteers. Holy shit. I'm fully staffed inside with nurses, respiratory therapists, LPNs, RNs, uh, physicians. Uh, we have anesthesiologists on our team. And then we have uh, mobile response teams out here. We have three teams, plus we can call an extra. Um, they're staffed with advanced care paramedics, primary care paramedics, EMRs, OFA3s. But at the same token, we, we don't promote drug and alcohol use. In fact, there's zero alcohol use here. It's really great. I, I work a lot of different festivals. This one has no alcohol. So I think for the reasons that we don't see the alcohol mixed with the, uh, the drugs. People still smuggle it in, yeah? They do, but not in the quantities. Right. Um, people are getting, they're, they're getting some in, but you're not drinking flats and flats at your camp. Um, and we don't have beer gardens, so you're not mixing that. And so your decisions around the drugs that you're taking are more of a sober mind. Do you think they do no alcohol for the people to keep it more of a chill vibe? The only time we find violence or people who are acting out or uncooperative is because they snuck, they somehow got alcohol. It's so funny to hear how the illegal ones aren't causing the issues, it's the legal drugs. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you're saying in this festival particularly compared to the other ones that do have alcohol, you see significantly less problems. Oh yes. Like, could you put an, like a ballpark percent on? Oh yeah, I would say we see 70% less problems or more. Wow. Yeah. And you attribute all that just to the alcohol, I abstinence. To the alcohol. Wow. So wherever you're at in sobriety, 
there's a place for you at Camp Clean Beats. It doesn't, no, it doesn't want to, there we go. It was stuck. <laughs> can I have a blowjob? Can I have a blowjob? Can I have a blowjob? That's actually still, that's still harassment. For so sure. we want to get beyond, this is a starting place, but we want to get beyond that and just talk about, you know, having people be accountable to their own actions and not be creeps. Not be creeps, so got it. Hi, Adam. Hi, Kira. Well, what would you like to do today? We are going to test this tab of acid okay. to see if it actually is acid or an N-bomb or something like that. That sounds great. What about being lost? Yo, you like substance. Yes. Yo, I watch your YouTube videos, What's up? Bro. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> That's, That's fucking awesome. awesome. Come here, dude. Happy Shambhala, guys. That's awesome. Is that cool? Can I get a picture with you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Man, you have your phone. Man, that's sick. Do you get a lot of N-bombs is what I wanted to ask you. I haven't had any yet, um, personally for me, but uh, I'm not sure what the rest but of But how do you know if it is N-bomb? Because it just has no reaction, right? And that's right. So you don't really know. You don't know. So if, if somebody came in with, with blotter paper and I was performing this test and no, there was no response, then I would encourage that individual to dump it, dump it because it's either a dud or it's got something else in there. Um, and either way, it's the t it's, it's too big a chance. But what if this is LSD and N-bomb? That's a great query. <laughs> so obviously, what we do is not perfect. We can't guarantee results. The spectrometer? Yeah, why we can't we use the, the spectrometer? Um, that's a great question for a chemist. I'm a social worker. Um, other question for you is I have a tab that she tested of acid. Why can't you run the tabs through this? Uh, so essentially because the paper that it's on is the main ingredient, right? So running the tab through that, we'd come up with maybe cellulose or some other like plant product that the paper's made out of, uh, versus the amount of LSD on it is so small uh, that you just probably wouldn't be able to pick it up. Uh, we're testing a ground score. It's a baggie they found. Today we've been seeing a lot of ground scores. My buddy's found two ground scores. We think one of them actually might be like meth or something. Can we see it? I was helping out on Patreon for a while. You dude. were? Yeah. That's sick. Thank you. I want to give you a hug. That's fucking yeah, awesome, man. I'm glad you're here. That's awesome, man. But not all not all people are good. But see, that's you get the vibe that it's a hippie fest, right? Like just to put a label on it, people are it's a loving place. Everyone's all shamba love. But I'm sure that does attract predators as well. Yes. It, it does. People come here uh, as predators to sell, deal drugs that are not good for people and sometimes people come here with the idea that they're gonna take advantage of other people. What would your, be your advice for guys who are trying to come to these festivals to pick up girls? Because I'm sure those are the ones who are causing a lot of the issues. Yeah. Do they, I bet they don't even always know that they're, you know, yeah. crossing lines. You're right um, about the women are the most vulnerable to violence and um, sexualized violence. Um, what would I say? I'd say be kind, be respectful, that usually gets the attention of uh, anybody, really, rather than uh, harassing, catcalling, and um, groping. It's weird. You'd think you wouldn't get that at, you know, something like this that spreads love. I was actually shocked to see all these different tents necessary. Yes, it's very minimal, and, and it's nothing like we've experienced at other festivals that have alcohol and all these other elements, but it does happen. So for me personally, yeah. That's one of the things I'm on the lookout for the most and I worry about the most because uh, unfortunately a lot of these incidents don't go reported uh, and, and that's the real worry is that someone feels shame that they put themselves in a the position for that to happen and for us and the security team and the harm reduction team that's something that we want people to know that it's never your fault no matter what happened whether you're hanging out with a person for the whole weekend and you feel you gave them the wrong signals, if it wasn't something that you consented to, it's absolutely wrong. You can't consent if you're under the influence. Right. It gets gray when two people are under the influence. This is turning purple, right? Yes, it is. So it is It is positive for indole. Does it usually go more purple than that, or is that the average reaction? It, is, it takes between um, sometimes like five seconds to five minutes. It doesn't necessarily mean there's not a lot on there. There could be, even though it was a slow Maybe, reaction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So always use a quarter. You can always go forward. You can't go back. It's a negative test for fentanyl. Uh, so just just so you know though as well, this dipstick only tests what's in that solution, right? So we took a small sample from your larger sample, put it in there. The test came back negative, 
So that says in that cup, there's no fentanyl. But there could still be in the product. But there still could be in the product, right? So it's not perfect, it's just an indication, exactly, yeah. Do you get a lot of drug-related emergencies? We mainly get, our main emergency is uh, heat-related. It's when people ma mix uh, the heat and drugs that gets concerning. Like, what's the procedure? They come in tripping out, what do you do? Well, we have a point person. We have somebody who's welcoming as they're coming in. So then they would be making contact with that person, right. touching base, seeing what their needs are. And then we have 36 beds back there. So depending really on, beds, yeah, super comfy beds. But we have, uh, we also have hammocks. We have like a coloring station. So does it bother you that there's so many people on drugs here? Does it bother any of the people in the camp? Does it maybe make them uncomfortable or? Well, I mean. Because if you're in recovery and then you see all these people tripping and taking ketamine and ecstasy, cocaine, it's GH, I, I was actually shocked your GHB is so common. It blew my mind. I would not have guessed that. Yeah. There's a lot of GHB at this festival. There is a lot I would have imagined MDMA as the most popular one. And and I have so little interaction with GHB in my day-to-day -day life as working on ambulance. We don't see it as much. No. So it does surprise me as well. Yeah. Um, but Narcan doesn't do anything for GHB. Uh, so the training and what we're all trained for is uh, respirations above all. You uh, stimulate the person, assess their airway, and ventilate, and that'll that'll help anyone that's not breathing. Narcan right. only helps people that are on narcotics and not breathing. <laughs> Look at all these whippets! Yeah. What is the most common substance people come in here freaking out on? Acid. Acid. What's the next one? Mushrooms. They ingest too much. They are not. They're unfamiliar. They're in an unfamiliar farm. Now we're in the actual. What is this area? We call this Resus or Trauma Bay. Um, so uh, we have swamp cooling here to make sure things get really cool. Fans here. This is our cryo tub from last night. Uh, Translation: uh, water in a <laughs> wooden bathtub. Do you get anything weird like DMT? Not that I've noticed. No. It's not a trend. Any ayahuasca? No. Never. Not that I know of. Interesting. Uh, to me, it looks like it might be chonga. Yeah. So. Um, Amazing. Well, thank you for doing this interview. You were awesome, and you're all worried about it. It was nice meeting you. Well, I mean, like, I didn't even get dressed. <laughs> this is my, I'm wearing my... You're in your festival good. <laughs> looking all, like, dirty. Everybody's dirty here, though. I know, you're right. Don't look at my toes. Oh. Thank you so much, man. Awesome. Really appreciate this. It's been a pleasure. It was nice meeting you, by the way. Yeah, What's nice meeting you, too. I kind of have, like, some nasty hands. Okay, we'll just fist pump. Yeah. Okay. We're told to elbow bump. <laughs> now it's getting dark, so we're going to have to wrap this up. What is your advice? For anyone who's coming to say let's this festival, if they want to stay safe, what would be the top? I don't know three things that they need to make sure of. Uh, top three things to stay safe at a music festival, like Shambhala. Uh, come with your friends uh, or meet friends, people that you trust, and and check in on each other. Take care of each other. That's that's huge. Um, uh, another thing is is uh, get educated. If you're going to be partying with substances. Be educated on what you're taking, what the adverse effects, what it mixes with, what it doesn't mix with. Yes, yeah. make a plan how you're going to party. Stick with that plan, and then take care of your body. The first, third thing you can do when you're, the, the stages here go till the morning. Yeah. Um, we actually cut the music in the morning so people can rest. We used to go 24 hours at really? all. Yeah, at several stages, wow. we've actually cut music in the morning so people would go re rest, recharge. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That third thing would be take care of yourself, take care of your body, make sure your friends are Maybe there's more than three. Is there anything else or is that about the uh, best? Just just love your neighbor <laughs> uh, and they'll love you back. Sweet. It was a pleasure yeah, talking to pleasure. you, man. Awesome. I really appreciated this. Yeah, no problem.